The Babylonian Talmud briefly describes the practice of brain surgery. In fact, brain surgery dates back to the earliest men. From a biblical standpoint, it would be the ten generations from Adam to Noah. The archaeologists call this the New Stone Age or the Neolithic period. Papyrus scrolls found in Egypt, which at least go back to the days of pharaohs, describe the procedure. Ancient skulls also on which brain surgery was performed, as well as the surgical instruments, have been found in Peru. The treatment was used for organic diseases, nervous disorders, bone inflammations, head injuries, headaches, epilepsy, mental illness, as well as for spiritual and magical reasons. It was often successful. Hippocrates, often considered the father of modern medicine, left many texts on brain surgery. The Edwin Smith surgical pyrus, which describes the treatment of many injuries, among them skull fractures, is often attributed to Imhotep, who was the viceroy of Pharaoh and considered by many to be the biblical character Joseph. In this Gemara, brain surgery is a digression on the discretion of whether a man with skin disease, Makashin, is obligated to divorce his wife. It's a Mishnah in Ketubah 7.10. In this case, it is talking about a disease where intercourse will weaken him and likely cause his death. Therefore, a divorce is required. The Gemara on that Mishnah then discusses those that are struck with Shekhin, which is translated as boils. It states that there are 25, 24 types of Shekhin, and in all of them, intercourse is generally considered as dangerous. The worst type of shekhin is called ra'atan. A simple reading of the Talmud would say that it is some sort of an insect which infests the brain that has four legs and is at least a half an inch long. It does not correspond to maladies found today. Typical parasites that, invite, that invade the brain are microscopic. The largest would be a tapeworm, but that has no legs. These disorders are treated with medicine. Surgery is used to remove a tumor. One can speculate it was a disease found in ancient times that has long been forgotten. The symptoms of Ra'atam are tearing eyes with a runny nose that brings pus to the mouth that attracts flies. A medicine is made by boiling together pila, ladanum, shavings from the smoothing of a leather hide, mililot, the rind of a nut tree in the petals from below the flower, a calyx of a red date tree. Some say pila is common mint. Rashi seems to say it is to surium polium, commonly called polygermander. It's a traditional Persian medicine used as an antiseptic, inflammatory, antispasmodic, and a painkiller. Labdunum is a soft resin from the cystus or rock rose, which is used to cover up odors. Mililot is a sweet-scented clover from the pea family. The surgery is conducted in a room which does not allow outside breezes, 
preferably one with marble walls. 300 cups of the medicine are poured on the patient's head in order to soften the skull. After that, the skull is opened to expose the brain. The four legs of the parasite are lifted up and placed on four myrtle leaves. It is then grasped with a pair of tweezers and burned so as not to prevent reinfection. I watched a video of brain surgery. They did nothing to soften the skull. The incision was made with a sharp scalpel, and the bone was cut with a device that was a combination of a drill and a saw. Medical imaging was a major tool for diagnosis and identified the place of the tumor. The original patient complaint was frequent falling. A friend of my mother in her 70s died of an undiagnosed brain tumor. She always had a sleepy expression on her face, which made me uneasy. Another sign may have been congenital club feet. She was a pure soul living in an in a not-so-pure area, which may have been a subtle source of aggravation. She also had an unusually pleasant personality. A speculation is that cheerful people may be prone to this disorder. All of these, though, are varying degrees of speculation. The Torah does not come to teach us science. While there is something to be gained from studying the Rebbenes found in religious sources, this is not their fundamental purpose. Their fundamental purpose is to teach a person to know God and to go in his ways. It would seem that one of the paths of Hashem is the path of good physical health, and it really is a transgression to grossly neglect one's health. Thank you.